Welcome back, my name is Steve Luchon. Today I'm going to be packing the scrubber for my Dibrite Optimus CM. The method I'm using will also work for the back mount unit. If you're new to this channel, please consider liking and subscribing as well as hitting that bell for future notifications. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're going to cover how to install both the Extend Air cartridge, also known as an EAC cartridge, and the granular sorb. You're going to need your canister, your canister lid, the Delrin nut, as well as the spring. You'll notice the spring will not be used when we're installing the EAC cartridge. You're going to want to check the expiration date, make sure you're good to go. Next, you want to write the day in which you opened the lid. I write this both on the lid and on the side of the canister. Comment below, do you do the same thing? This is important if you decide to use the canister multiple times. That's one thing that's really nice about the EAC cartridges is you can do that. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take it out. By the way, who here likes the way that that smells? I love the way those cartridges smell. Now we're gonna write what is the top of the cartridge. You also want to inspect the cartridge, make sure that it's not dented or dinged real bad. That could be very bad and could cause a CO2 breakthrough. Next, I like to write the orientation in which it is going inside the canister, and then of course the date in which it was opened. Everyone has a different way of doing this, I'm sure. Let me know if you do something completely different. As long as you're using the same method every time, I think that's what's important. It should slide in pretty easy. Now you're going to take the nut and you are going to seat that nut inside of the EAC cartridge plastic core. You want to turn it until the nut is snug and stops. If you are going to use the EAC cartridge multiple times, make sure you write down the length of time used. You want to jot this down on the container itself as well as the cartridge. Make sure you note the orientation and install it the same way every time. If not, this could cause a CO2 breakthrough. Now, moving on to how to install the Sofolime 797-812 mesh. I like to take a piece of tape, put it over top of the premix tube rod. Then I take my sorb and I fill it to about half full. I like tapping it about three or four times, then do a quarter turn. I do this until it settles. If you watch, you can see it actually settling out. This is highly important to do right. Take your time. It's not okay to rush this process. This is one of the most important things you're going to do with your rebreather during the build process. You're going to want to fill this up until it makes a cone that rises above the premix tube rod. I like to take my finger and just kind of like clean it off slightly and then I start to tap. As you're tapping, you can actually see it settle out a lot. I'll do this for quite a few minutes just to make sure that it is just right. As soon as I see the granules stop moving, I know they're packed down. Then I'm confident there won't be any channeling when I put that lid on and tighten it down. There's a lot of benefits of using EAC cartridges over granular sorb. It eliminates absorbent dust contamination and also reduces problems as a result of channeling. The fact that you can use these cartridges multiple times, take them out and just plug them in as needed, it might actually end up saving you money if you use them smart. Some people look at the fact that granular sorb is cheaper as a benefit. I don't know, comment below. What do you guys think? Now it's time to put the lid on. When I put the lid on, I like to kind of give it a little shake and press at the same time, just to make sure the screws on the back of that lid are seated inside the mesh pretty good. Now, you wanna make sure that nut is the opposite direction in which you would install on the EAC cartridge. I tighten a little bit and I start to tap and turn again. 
Again, comment below if you do something a little bit different. Some people use a rubber mallet. I was never taught to use that with the dive right system. I like to give it a little turn like this, left and right, just to see if it's moving at all, if I can hear anything moving inside, but looks like we're good to go. Thank you for watching the entire video. For those of you that haven't done it already, and you found this video to be interesting, please consider liking, subscribing, and of course hitting that bell for future notifications. Also, if you'd like to watch another interesting video, well, here's one right now. Okay, you dive safe, and I'll see you in the water.